All right, here we go. Ah, damn it, I can't get it started. Oh, hey guys. I am uh, trimming some crown molding up on top. Oh, I don't need these on. Sorry about that yelling. Trimming some crown molding up on top of the, the bar area here at the carry trainer office. Clearly, I'm not using the chainsaw, but if I was, I had the right PPE on, right? Personal protective equipment. So you clicked on the video link here. How not to shoot yourself with a gun. You know, I am sent videos constantly. Stuff you guys see, it goes viral over and over. The video is usually something stupid. Sometimes I think they're made up. Sometimes they're not. Somebody negligently, accidentally discharging a firearm. There is a difference between accident and negligence. But this thing will never hurt me, ever. It'll never hurt anybody I care about, ever, if I follow two, two, two simple rules. First of all, some of you might think you're too cool to have this discussion. Too many followers. You've traded with too many cool guys. Maybe you were a cool guy. The best soldiers and war fighters I know also adhere to strict guidelines of safety. They adhere to strict guidelines and practices because that's how you get an outcome that can be repeatable, right? How do I never hurt myself or somebody I care about with this? Twofold. Never point the muzzle at them or myself and depress the trigger. Boom! We're humans. Humans make mistakes. I'm going to set this down, but we're going to come back to it. This chainsaw, dangerous, man. Dangerous. Very dangerous tool. Or is it? This thing has sat in my garage, not running for months, and it's never hurt anybody. Just like we talk about how the gun can sit and not hurt anybody. You know, more accidents happen falling-wise in America on a ladder six foot or shorter than any high kind of freaky heights. Do you want to know why that is? Complacency, right? Hubris. I'm not a construction worker. I actually was for many years, but I don't need to be to walk up this little ladder. Well, people fall and break their necks, their bones, their backs, and die every day in America falling off of something only this high. Is the ladder safe or is the ladder unsafe? Is the chainsaw safe or is the chainsaw unsafe? How about climbing, rock climbing? This is a really good harness from Black Diamond. I've got a brother that is an expert climber, both on big walls and on towers. He works for a company that trains people on how to safely rescue folks off of a tower. Well, climbing is very unsafe. Is climbing safe or is climbing unsafe? Here's my proposal to you. None of this stuff is safe or unsafe. It is you who is safe or unsafe. See, safety is not a thing. You know, in the construction world, they try to make saws that have guards and devices that stop you from chopping your fingers off. At the end of the day, at some point, that blade is still exposed in order to cut the wood or the pipe, right? The steel, whatever the saw is meant to do. You still choose not to put your fingers into it. We cannot make a gun any safer than they are because at the end of the day, you still choose what to point that thing at and depress the trigger. You know, there's simple things like training rounds. We recently had an accident where a training round was mistook for a real round. I just grabbed these shotgun rounds because if you're keyed up, you're not paying attention, it'd be pretty easy to mix these up. You guys that are super savvy say, that had never happened to me. They look different. They feel different. Not to somebody that doesn't know. You know what? We had a class this past week. Somebody came to class. They left class. They went home and they discharged a nine millimeter through their palm. Somebody that's never had an accident, somebody that's been around guns their whole life, somebody that's a member of a club that shoots guns, somebody that's safe. See, we're all safe until we're not. Safety is not a lever. Safety is not a training program. Safety is not the proper harness. Safety is a state of mind. It is a way. It is a practice. You can do things that seem to be unsafe in a safe manner. You can do things through controlled practices 
that will lead to an outcome where you never hurt yourself or anybody else. That is a system and that is also directly tied to your attitude and how you approach your training. See, we're often too lax because we want to do the cool guy stuff. I'm helping a, uh, a range set up a training program. They've got some staff and the staff says, we're not worried about the low level stuff. We just want help with the high level stuff. Well, that's flattering to me that they think I'm a high level guy. But I have found, and I know many of you will agree, there is no difference. And in fact, that low level stuff is more important than the high level. Because at that lower level, and this is something I feel I'm good at, we instill, instill habits that get us the desired outcome. So if you mix up training rounds, which we are humans and we do, the gun's pointed in a safe direction if there is a negligent discharge or accidental discharge. We have practices where we use the saw in an appropriate manner, where our body is not near at the, at in front of the blade or behind the blade. We use the proper protective equipment. We have double checks on how we tie knots, on how we put carabiners together. We double check. We have practices on looking over the rivets on our ladder from time to time, on ensuring that as we climb a ladder, we have three points of contact, right? Hand off, hand off, foot, hand. This is just standard stuff, but if you don't think about it, you don't think about it. At the end of the day, people like to say, oh, well, it's the Glock's fault because you have to press the trigger to dry fire the gun. How do I always clear a gun? if I'm gonna clean it. Well, no matter what, I don't get lax. Remove the source of ammunition. If you've got a holster on or pockets and I was out on the range, I would drop that in my pocket because now I have two free hands to work. Cycle. I watch that round come out, but I can visually look. If needed, physically. I don't need to just randomly shove my finger in there. I saw it's out. I see it's out. If it's dark or for some reason I needed to look uh, with touch, I could do that. Empty, empty, look away, look back, double check, muzzle down, gun is safe to do work on. Now if I need to take it apart, for example this Glock, I don't need to point that at myself to do that. The gun is now inert, I cannot hurt myself with it, but I do not need to point my, my muzzle at myself or anybody else. Even in the process of doing this, you should be having this muzzle in a safe direction no matter what. Why? And when you put a gun back together, make sure that you're doing it straight. Because accidents do happen. If you've never had a car accident, yet you drive the car every day for 50 years, you will be on the roadway while there's an accident, even if you didn't see it, which meant you could have been the one hit. A friend of mine's wife had a drunk driver recently hit her. Thank God Almighty she's okay. If you work in a kitchen long enough, you will get burned. If you work on a construction site long enough, you or somebody you know will get injured. If you work around guns long enough, you will see an accidental or negligent discharge. You will see shrapnel come off of the berm and cut somebody. This shit is not playtime. Develop a system and then the number one thing is hold yourself accountable. A couple side points, alcohol, drugs, do not mix with guns, ever. Ever. If you're hanging out, if guys I know want to drink and play with guns, adios. I am not the kind of guy that does that. Ever. It doesn't work. Anything that impairs your judgment when something like this is involved is a no-go. Don't hang out with people that that is acceptable for. Yourself, don't get involved in it. It's the same reason you don't drink or drive. If you wouldn't be operating a car, don't have the gun in your hand. If you wouldn't be cutting vegetables, don't have the gun in your hand. If you wouldn't be climbing on a ladder, don't have a gun in your hand, period, period. The way that you train yourself is what you will get out at best. Hold yourself to a high tolerance for safety and understand it is not these things that are safe or unsafe. It is you and the practices with which you ingrain. Dig? Mickey with CarryTrainer.com. Be well, don't be dickheads, don't cut crown molding with a chainsaw.